Uprisings in Iran as young girls tear off their headscarves in protest of the government's regime. Reports have come out confirming more than 100 people have been killed so far by security forces and more than 1,000 people, including local journalists, have been arrested. These protests come on the heels that were ignited, rather, after the death of a young Iranian woman, Masha Amini, who was arrested for not wearing her hijab in accordance with with government standards. Joining us now to discuss these latest uprisings is counterterrorism and foreign policy expert Lisa Deftari. Lisa, it's great to have you on this story. This is a story that weekly on Saturday Agenda I want to continue to follow up with because it's important and it's not going away. And right now, the information is very limited in terms of what we're learning about these large scale protests. Uh, Iranian state media actually puts the death toll from these protests much lower, uh, but it could be potentially much higher because of the limited information. What do we know about the evolution of these protests and what shape they're taking? Because it's not just, again, uh, the freedom of women in Iran to dress how they wish to. This has evolved into much more. Absolutely. And um, it's, a, it's a very, very astute point to make is that each time the catalyst for these movements, uh, and I'm talking about over the last 43 years that this regime has been in power, we have seen the Green Revolution of 2009. We saw student uprisings in 1999. We saw again year, year after year, we see small and large scale protests. And each time there's a different catalyst. There are the egg protests and the gasoline protests and protests over the economy. The catalyst may be different, but the final message that we hear on the streets through, through the slogans and the chants of the protesters is always the same. Death to the dictator. They're calling for regime change. They're calling for a toppling of the regime. And you're absolutely right to say that we don't have proper information. I mean, we are trying to get um, videos. We have dozens and dozens of videos on the foreign desk that we are uploading every hour uh, as much as we can get through social media, through Telegram and WhatsApp from the protesters on the ground. But remember, the Internet is is shut off in the country. Uh, and of course, the crackdowns have become brutal. The Achilles heel of this regime has always been and always will remain the people of Iran, 80 million strong that can come out and topple this regime. And they know that they, they have that power because that's exactly how this regime came into power in 1979 with the grassroots movement, with the people coming out onto the streets. And it's interesting, Lisa, too, because you look at, uh, again, the sort of genesis of these protests and, you, you know, you've talked about previous uprisings. What have you noticed about these demonstrations and is there any hope that there could be uh, a push for real change here? Yeah, we've seen an absolute evolution in the protests. And this time around, I'll say two major changes or maybe three, uh, the first of which is that they are all across the country. I mean, previous years, people would try to say these are like the cool kids of Tehran who are coming out and they have too much money and too much time on their hands and they're too progressive and they're the ones who are against the government. But we're even seeing protests in the most clerical cities, in the religious cities, all across the country in almost every province we're seeing uh, uprisings. We're also seeing it's not just a women's movement, although, again, the catalyst here was the death of the 22-year-old for not uh, wearing her hijab properly. But Men, women, children, people of all ages are coming out as families to protest the regime. And lastly, I would say they are extremely brazen. It's almost as if, you know, this was the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. They are not backing down anytime soon. Uh, and I'm seeing both from the side of the regime, unfortunately, they have uh, up the uh, crackdowns and the violence and on the side of the protesters as well. They're setting fire to besiege headquarters. They're setting fire to police cars. They're setting fire to tires to block off the road so that the regime forces can't come to the protests and uh, come in with their uh, vehicles. So, again, a lot of courage I'm seeing from the protesters, a lot of people coming out. And again, we're entering our fourth week. So the stamina, the perseverance is something that we haven't seen in previous protests. Absolutely, Lisa. And, and to your point, um, well, I think what a lot of people don't fully comprehend is that when people go out and protest on the street, of Iran. They're literally risking their lives. Uh, and we'll continue to follow that. Lisa Dittari, great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you.